Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the PC Perspective Podcast. We're at episode 659. We're recording this on January 12, 2022. It's our second show of the new year. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Kent Burgess. I'm Brett Van Sprimber. And Josh and, ain't here. Yeah, Josh isn't here. He took the night off. Yeah. He's ill. He he never calls in. So you know he's no. gonna be really sick. So we he wish can you barely all. type. He yeah. can barely reach the keyboard right now. He was now. coughing too hard to type. That's right. Yeah. About Kent will will serve in his stead admirably. You can find out when we go live for events like this podcast recording session, which we started about, I don't know, we're about 10 minutes late, but that's par for the course around here. PCPro.com slash subscribe. And you can go to Patreon.com. Become one of our patrons. We greatly appreciate it. We had some news on that front this week. I uh, had alerts from Man Bear Pig and Ali. Both signed up, and I sent them little messages, personal we messages. We told you Man Bear Pig was real. That's very. It's true. Man Bear Pig is real. I just got a note a little while ago that Sir Bogative at Fabrication Labs, or maybe it's one name, Sir Bogative Fabrication Labs. Anyway, he just bumped his pledge. I think again, he's like a repeat offender in that area. He keeps like appreciation, keeps that rolling in wow. for some for some weird reason. But thank you very much. We don't have Josh with us, so we can't do burger mm. update. Hmm. But we can launch directly into the news. And a lot of stuff happened since last week, believe it or not. You'd think, okay, CES is over. We kind of did our CES highlights wrap-up show, even though it technically had like another day last week. Oh, no. Post-CES, we've had all sorts of news. Such as the 12-gigabyte version of the GeForce RTX 3080. Who's excited? Uh Oh, wait, is is this real? Is this real? Well, the picture here only is the original 380 because I don't have a 380 12 gig. But yeah, it doesn't look real. This this I real? Don't know. It's totally real. Look at the <laughs> look. If you go to the website now, Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3080 landing page is now the family page. It's all oh. grown up. It's got a family now. There's two models. As you can see, slightly different GPU engine specs. This new 12 gigabyte version has more. It's not just more memory on a faster bus. Because that's actually the big thing. It's, it goes from That's the big thing right yeah. there. 20% more bandwidth from this. Because it goes from a 320 to a 384 bit bus. And it has more CUDA cores. Apparently the base clock is a little bit lower, but the I thought the uh, boost clock was the same. When I was looking at video cards... Yeah. Dot com and you also get a little We're bit more juggle a little bit of power oh yeah that too yes i should just go to videocards.com here i, I <laughs> oh, there it is here <laughs> and you linked it let's see here's the new skew specs it goes from 320 to 350 watts there's that 20 percent bump in memory bandwidth so it goes from 760 to 912 gigs per second we're approaching that terabyte per second mark from the uh 3090 ti same memory uh, clock, but just the, the bigger bus. Of course, more memory. Okay, 1710 on the boost clock. So that is the same as the original 3080, which has now been retroactively named the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte. And then the other big change is, of course, the SM count or GPU cluster count, which is now 70 instead of 68. So you get more RT cores, slightly more tensor cores. And of course... The MSRP is uh, kind Ridiculous. of up in the air. Mm. Theoretically, you might say. I think they should have called the original one the classic. Yeah. Like when Apple like, released the Macintosh yes. classic in like yeah. 89 or whatever. Just, yeah. Just skip me right there. What do you guys think? Uh, so far, the cheapest one, I guess, is 1249 That's an EVGA model. Mm. I just got the email. I'm very EVGA's. confused. <laughs> you're confused why what could uh, there's just uh just looking at that chart uh it, it makes uh no sense other than the uh if they're getting wafers that are 
not complete enough to over 3080 Ti's, but they've got enough good processors that they can that they're better than the original 3080. I don't know. <laughs> Um, well, look, it's all, all GA-102, as you're pointing out here, it, and yes. they aren't doing a thing to alleviate the uh, the lack of availability at anything lower down the SKU scale. Why not wedge in another SKU and bump the price? Who's, well, who's, from who, that perspective, it makes <laughs> sense. It just doesn't make well, yes. any sense for anyone else. Yes. This is, yeah, this is one of those products that definitely benefits the uh, the company selling it the most. Yeah. <laughs> It's not really for us, but I, I, now that you mentioned it's GA-102, right smack in the middle of this uh, table that we keep pointing to for videocards.com. Not a sponsor, by the way. Videocards.com is not a sponsor of PC Perspective. Um, the RTX 3080 Ti, look at that. It's got exactly the same memory specs, 12 gigabytes, 384-bit bus, same bandwidth, same TDP or TGP. Huh. Huh. The only differences, besides some slightly tweaked clocks, is about 10 SMs. So you turn yeah. off 10 SMs, and you've got a 3080 12 gig. So if you have a GA102-225 that doesn't quite pass muster, then you can downgrade it to a 220, and now you've got yourself a 3080 12 gig. So this is clever. It's just, you know, so the 3080 reading. Ti should now be the 3080 Ray Tracing Edition. Well, then what would the 3090 be? Better. Because I mean, what what's a better Expensive. ray tracing card? That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the don't even ask MSRP <laughs> card. Well, and good luck trying to power the bloody thing, as we'll mention a little bit later on. Hey, high power oh. power supplies are are very hot right now. Yeah, but twelve plus fours pins aren't. <laughs> That's yeah. true. But everybody there just is a story to, about that. Everybody just needs to convert. You know, whatever you have in your office or your game room, <clears throat> if it's just one of those dinky hundred and fifteen. No, you need a 30 amp. And- yeah, you've oh, got yeah. yeah, to set that. yourself up with like 220, 240. Oh. Right. You know those dryer plugs, electric dryer plugs? That's what you need. That's what you need for your computer now. Well, I don't mm-hmm. think it's compatible with that NEMA plug, so you'll need a different wiring. But you need some kind yeah. of adapter. Yeah, it's it's going to get expensive. Ah, yes. <laughs> for, you know, <laughs> I used to think... The type 1 adapter. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that electricians were expensive. Well, the, with the cost of graphics cards... It's downright affordable to have them come in and rewire your your house for your new 2200 watt power supply. <laughs> yes, or whatever it takes. New driver update coming. And I know that's not the most exciting thing, but in two days, NVIDIA's driver update brings yet another scaling technology. I know we've all been oh, clamoring for more. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, DLSS and AMD has all of their new scaling technology. FS- FSR. Mm-hmm. Well, now we have DLDSR. Dildozer? Dildozer. Dildozer? Which is deep learning dynamic super resolution. And if you're familiar with these dynamic resolution things, it's basically uh, you're punishing yourself in the name of better image quality because you render off screen at a higher resolution than you downsample it and display it on your monitor. So it can get rid of like jagged edges and things. It can look nice. I've only done this in the past to try to max out VRAM back when the uh, Radi- uh, Radeon 7 first came out. I was trying to figure out how on earth can I max out 16 gigs of VRAM. So I rendered a game at 8K off screen and that'll do it. But anyway, they, they use Prey as their example here of native 1080p versus DSR, which is uh, it's rendering at 4K off screen and then downsampling to 1080 versus DLDSR at the 2.25x setting, which actually renders it at 1620p and then downsamples it at 1080p. Now, don't get confused because they just released a new driver, but it was literally just to support the RTX 3080 and nothing else. So not the, the not the old 3080, the the new 3080. No, just the new 12 yeah. gigabyte version. That's the only supported yeah. GPU in that entire driver update. Right. So there's going to be another new GeForce Game Ready driver in two days as we record this that brings this downsampling technology. And you can see how to implement it in this handy screenshot of the 3D settings. When will the downsampling madness end? See, DLSS gives you higher frame rates. DLDSR gives you slightly lower frame rates, but... uh, possibly perceptibly better image quality. 
but yeah, it'll it works with anything. So you get better looking games, I guess. Sure. Yeah. <sighs> and AMD dropped one this week too, but it didn't do much. Did it have a new down sampling technology? It, uh, do you consider Monster Hunter Rise a down sample from the original? Can we uh, briefly apply the brakes to that thought process while I mentioned that uh, we had just had a pledge come in from from Patreon? And we, we did forget to mention that if if you don't if you change your name and if you go in and do something, uh, we'll probably be forced to read it. You know, we'll just stop the show in its tracks and read whatever you write. And uh, this would be from uh, the uh, uh, Patreon member, excruciating rectal pain. Cheers to and, that. Uh, okay. Yep. Sorry to derail the show, but that's fine. Done. No, we appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Please do it again many times. Yeah. <laughs> well, we commensurate, you know, and action. they will. We'd love to hear higher hurt. pledges from excruciating rectal pain all the yeah. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing gets us going in the morning like excruciating rectal pain. You know, that's true. We, how we, nothing gets you out of bed quicker. AMD. We talked about this. Uh, one of their CES announcements was the RX 6500 XT bringing gaming to the masses. You know, it's hard to buy a graphics card these days. And they understand that. So they said, why Thank don't goodness. we bring a $200 option to the market that will actually be sold for 300 and also be sold out instantly. But if that wasn't good enough, the RX 6500 XT is limited to just a buy four connection. It's at least PCI Express 4.0. But it has a buy four interface. And if you have uh, been reading into this at all, you understand why, because this is a mobile part. This is their new six nanometer mobile GPU being repurposed as a desktop GPU, give it a higher TDP, and thus it can hit those super high clocks that it has. Do you need more than a buy four interface for a low end GPU? I guess is the question. Maybe uh, it has maybe to be PCI we'll to... 5.0, 16 by, or, you know, it's just crap <laughs> because it's going to use every single bit of that bandwidth. <clears throat> I think it was it was actually Charlie at Semi Accurate who was quoted. Uh, I saw it in my feed the other day. Videocards.com had originally reported a different die size, and he got it straight from AMD that the die size is actually a very small number, one hundred and seven millimeters squared. Oh, that's it. Yeah, and it's the sixty five hundred M and sixty three hundred M, both TSMC six nanometer. That tiny one hundred and seven millimeter squared die. And as, as Charlie says here at Semi-Accurate, if you take that die and up the TDP to 80 slash 107 watts, GPU plus RAM, board power, slap it on a PCIe card, you get the new 6500 XT. So yep. it, at that point, oh, well, yeah, it, it makes sense that it's a Pi 4 because that's how they're going to be implementing it into laptops. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, if you've got a good enough BIOS, that means you could probably disable your BI-16, plug it into an electrical BI-4, mm-hmm. and actually have a bunch of more PCIe lanes for other things to do. Storage, I suppose. Yeah, sure. And the bandwidth on a PCIe Gen 4 BI-4 is still as high as a PCIe Gen 3 by 16 right? Right. So... Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're you're not going to really lose anything. Now the question is, it, will you lose anything if you connect this to a, a, a Gen three by four? Which is what I need That's to find. That's really out. the question. Yep. We will get our hands on one of these, and I'll I'll go into the BIOS and disable by you know the Gen four. Speaking of super fast things, Intel has this new Core i nine part coming out. It's from the current generation. It's still Alder Lake. It's 12th gen desktop. But we're back to the Kentucky Shrout edition. The KS is coming back for the first time since, I think, 2019 when the 9900 KS came out. And now we're going to have a 12900 KS that hits 5.5 gigahertz single core out of the box. And in the screenshot from the presentation... There's a video, there's a link to the video in our news post about this. They have the system running at 5.2 gigahertz all core with boosts on two of the cores of up to 5.5 gigahertz. So those are the performance cores, of course. The E cores are clocked at four gigahertz. But uh, that's pretty fast. Now, how much power was that drawing? I'd like to find out how much power it is drawing. But, you know, the better silicon... Generally, you 
you won't need as much power to achieve a higher clock. Do so you think this is going to be a very heavily binned product? They're not just throwing a bunch of extra. Voltage I think it's going to have to be a heavily binned product. Yeah. Okay, so yes. in other words, it'll be rare. No, everything is already rare. This will be ultra rare. And the other question is, uh, what was the cooling that they were using on that? That was not specifically mentioned. That wasn't really mentioned during in the any way, presentation. shape, or form, was it? The, the CPU was in a chest freezer under the table. You know, it's it was a completely realistic scenario. Just ignore the three giant li- li- uh, bottles of LN2 behind me. They're, they're not involved in this in any way, shape, or form. The energy level has been a little bit low without Josh this week. I think I'm feeling that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm, feeling that. Also, I'm, I'm sorry. Distracted. Put away wet. Let's raise the energy level try. by talking Bring about small form factor computers that use desktop parts. What could be better? Mm. This lady right here is inviting you to explore the Nook N- a 12 Extreme Dragon Canyon. Now, if you look very closely at this board, which they never actually showed in close up, so I had to crop an image here, you can kind of make out the text and they didn't give much away in the video. It was just a sneak peek. But the new Dragon Canyon Extreme Nook will use a desktop processor. It'll ship with either a Core i7 or Core i9, but it's it's in a socket. You can replace the CPU. They make that very clear on the side there. Yes. <laughs> Look, here is a CPU socket. <laughs> then yeah. above that, this is where it starts oh. to get concerning. Like, wait a minute, this is this is one of those compute elements. It's the same form factor. They're not very big. 12th gen Alder Lake Core i9. You're going to cool it with one of those little laptop blower coolers, and this is a desktop part. But don't worry, there's a vapor chamber. So somehow between the vapor chamber and the blower, like the side blower fan, maybe? I bet you there's super pipes involved. <sighs> Not I only see one pipe. Not yeah, but it. it's one super pipe. Oh, okay. Maybe That's an a, ultra pipe. A super pipe. It's a super pipe. Had to be said. Science project. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be very quiet, but I think the performance <laughs> is going to be very good. Uh, but here's the most important thing. This is DDR4 memory over here. Oh. They were smart. They said, you know what? How about if we sell a product where you can actually buy RAM for it? So this will have two SODIMM slots for DDR4, 3200, three... Three... NVMe? NVMe? Well, between the two on this board and then the one on the... Um, daughter board there. Daughter right. board. I thought there... Oh, I don't see it here, but there has typically been one in between the two PCI Express slots on the daughter board. Mm, they imply. Or whatever that is. The back plane. Yeah. Uh, you know, high-end Thunderbolt. It's got Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6E, 10 gigabit LAN on board. They're going huh. all out. And you can watch this uh, video on YouTube. I have the uh, shortcut to the, the five-minute-ish mark. If you want to see, uh, who is this? Marketing specialist Cassandra Bodzak give you a virtual tour of the client computing stuff from CES. But anyway, that was my one complaint about the Nook Extreme. You could replace the GPU with anything you wanted, but you couldn't replace the CPU because it was soldered in. You had to buy one of those expensive compute elements. Not anymore. Yeah, but I love the evolution of the Nook. It's gone from a wee little thing you bolt on the back of your monitor to, holy crap, that's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, and still kept the, some of the lower end ones at the same time. With a twelve nine hundred, that that thing would be uh, it would be very difficult to keep cool and keep from throttling. But something that size, can you imagine with like a twelve six hundred K in it? Uh, it would be very impressive performance, and you should still be able to keep it pretty reasonably temperatured. They might not be pushing it, you know, as far as it will go in order to keep the heat down, come to think of it. Yeah, on, and the, the BIOS on those board. is a little different, and yep. the power limits are very strongly enforced. So they may, so they may down clock it a bit. Yeah, if it's like, uh, for this CPU, we'll put it into this performance 65-watt mode, that kind of a thing. Love yeah, and, it, and then it tops out at 4.9 or something, or... Lower. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I, I imagine you could probably still hit some single core clocks, but yeah, all core low oh, right. is probably not yeah. going to be very high yeah. compared yep. to desktop parts in a regular. Yeah, well, it's not really what you're aiming for with a Nuck either, are you? <sighs> I, I want it all. I want the small form factor. I want the high performance. I want it to be silent. 
you want it all core, you want it to be silent. Mm-hmm. Five gigahertz is all that core. Much, is that too no. much to ask for? Can we put mm-hmm. the Kentucky mm-hmm. Shroud Core i9 12th gen in the NUC 12 Extreme? Because how how is it really extreme if it's not using their fastest part? No, you're right about that. You're going to have to try that. Let's pause here to hear from uh, our podcast sponsor this week. These days, it can be difficult to find and hire the right candidate for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has made it easier to find the candidates worth interviewing faster and for free. Not too long ago, I had the opportunity to use LinkedIn Jobs system to locate potential positions. It was super easy and very productive. I do recommend it. You can create a free job post in minutes to reach not just your own network, but far beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. Focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience by using targeted screening questions to get your role in front of only the most qualified candidates. Then, use the simple tools on LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize those who'd like to interview and then hire. Small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash pcper. That's linkedin.com slash pcper to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I was uh, waiting along with everybody else who paid attention to this story for oh. an announcement yesterday. January 11 was supposed to be the day that AMD Radeon graphics, RDNA 2 graphics in a Samsung SoC were going to be unveiled. And then they took all the marketing materials down and deleted the website. Oops. So uh, there's speculation as to why Samsung did this. There's an article on Phone Arena that's supposed to be Clearing the air here, Samsung allegedly cleared the air about this because there have been rumors about the performance being an issue, that they could not get the clocks they wanted because of thermal constraints with the GPU. So the Exynos 2200 has been delayed. But Business Korea, uh, they talked to, because of course Samsung's a Korean company, they say, where is the quote here? Even if I can't find it, they basically say that uh, there's nothing wrong. There's no performance issue. They're just waiting for the next flagship phone to come out. So, so uh, do you believe them here? Or, no. Um, okay, just checking. Why would they do it so abruptly? Unless there was a component shortage that made them want to. I mean, they would still announce the phone if it was going to be announced alongside the Galaxy S22, as this yep. is stating here. Yeah. You could just announce it then, and then later provide an updated release date. They've refuted the rumors that production performance issues uh, blah, 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 and assured customers that the problems exhibited by the Exynos 2100 have been taken care of. Yeah, there was another article I was reading, I think, that had more details about the specifics of the performance issues that are being rumored. It was all coming, I think, from one leaker, though. Mm-hmm. So if it's true, the issue was that they wanted 1.8 or 1.9 gigahertz clocks. They were only getting 1.3 and they want to at least meet in the middle at about 1.5 before they release. And right now they can't do that thermally. Do you remember when PCI Express 4 was this hot new thing and all the AMD fans were thumbing their nose at Intel? Oh, because, those were the days. Yeah, what, like have, 11 years ago? It feels like that. Well, then Intel finally caught up last generation and put PCI Express 4.0 in their motherboards. Now, ooh, Intel has PCI Express 5.0 and AMD still stuck on 4.0. And oh, DDR4. 5.0 is a flash in the pan that ain't going to last long. Right, That's because <laughs> PC, PCI SIG, those bastards are at it again. <laughs> and now they've upped the ante. It's PCI Express 6. Take that, Intel. Now yeah. you're on last generation technology. PCIe 5. <laughs> We've ratified a new standard, which means it's probably a year or two away. But it's on the business wire, so we can talk about it. Look at the data rate. 64 giga transfers per second raw data rate and up to 256 mm-hmm. gigabytes per second via a by 16 configuration. They're doing some interesting things here to make this ridiculous speed possible, too. Alan is saying, oh, it's just overkill. Like, what are you going to use this for? <laughs> well, for gaming systems. Oh, that's... Yeah, that not he not totally for agrees. his uh, 822 <laughs> zettabyte freaking <laughs> raid. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Are you familiar with Norton Antivirus? Well, they nope. have 
They have a subsidiary called Avira. Not that, not to be confused with Avast. This is another Avaris no. called Avira. And it is a company now known as Norton LifeLock, by the way. Oh, okay. Oh. That sounds like somebody that's going to, you know, it's a company that's going to protect my identity. <laughs> what are they no, going to do? Gonna... What does their software do? Uh, it turns your computer into a, a crypto miner. You'll be mining Ethereum. Yeah, uh, hey, it'll hey. take a 15% cut off of Come everything. On. You've got to opt into this. Let's be fair for now. Just, ah, for now. <laughs> now, there is a point because, yes, you did used to opt into it, but Norton LifeLock is going to be enabling this by default now. Those bastards. <laughs> So we'll protect you from other crypto miners because it might interfere with ours. <laughs> like, mm. Yeah. And so Avira is going to be the same bloody freaking thing where uh, you're just suddenly going to be given a wallet. I mean, they don't really even say that. It's like, it's my wallet. Yeah, but is it really actually your wallet? Do you actually sign in with a some sort of approved wallet or is this a Norton wallet that... Uh, is taking a 15% cut off of what they tell you is going into your wallet. Jeremy, don't panic. It's a Norton wallet. <laughs> also, what is yeah, it? 1060 S. Are they mining on a, like a mobile GPU? Hmm. They're mining on everything. You don't have a choice. Yeah. At least you won't. I feel like this is not the worst hash rate I've ever seen. I don't know what a 1060 is supposed it's to get. Probably, probably not a mobile part. No, that's probably that sounds- lies. Yeah, it's overclocking it's the snot like out 30, of it, like burning it up. That sounds like 3060, 3070 territory. Really? Yeah, About like 22 that's mega hashes. The... I thought 36, no, I don't know. I thought, because you can't really, unless you have the... Do you know, know what else it means? You can literally somewhere. hear this whirring of your power meter outside as it's oh. sucking juice. Sure. Because that isn't included in your subscription to Norton LifeLock. Uh, <sighs> you know, power bills are on you. Yeah. And if they're so, yeah, taking just, 15%, you're probably losing money. And they're, you're, you're literally depending on them to honestly report how much Ethereum you've mined. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. At the point that an antivirus program, well, but what once used to be a great antivirus program and, you know, a non-destructive delete. And back in the day when Norton was a thing, they're selling you this subscription for product that has been proven to be not really working very well, period, and is now forcing you to mine for them. How, how am I supposed to trust an antivirus company that makes me literally mine for them? At my own cost. I have to pay them for this privilege. And somehow they haven't responded to uh, Brian Krebs... Uh, looking out for you know, looking for a comment about this. They have nothing to say. It's because they're too busy doing a Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, they're diving around in a gold mine. Yeah, I just this is surreal, even for the world we live in right now. Remember when Norton was a series of utilities that yes. ran on like DOS computers? Nor- mm, yeah, non-destructive reformatting. Yeah, it like was brilliant. Data recovery for floppy disks, things like that. Mm. Now mm. you're now you're doing this. Copy protected ink. Yes, it's one of Jeremy's favorite subjects, and it keeps on coming up because now because of the component shortage, these companies can't get the lockout <laughs> chips they need. So, <laughs> so then they're like, fitting their own ink. <laughs> yeah, it's like um. <laughs> guys, uh, there's a workaround. You don't actually have to use our ink. Just do this. And then you can use a third-party cartridge. Was this only on the German site? It was like not everywhere are they admitting this. No, they, this. because they don't have to. Uh, Germany has some very interesting uh, corporate oversight laws, such as, you know, you, you kind of have to admit that if people are literally going out buying your authentic cartridges because you told them you had to because otherwise your printer will come take over your entire uh, system because that chip inside that, well, wait, aren't you the only guys that put the chip inside? Just no, no, don't, don't mention it. It's just, there could be a cart to chip in the cartridge that would just tack your machine all together and take over your entire network through the printer. Um, 
So you need our authenticated one and you'd never be able to print without it, except we can't get those. So yeah, you just click cancel and this and that and the other thing. And this chip that we told you would without it, you would die. Uh, you can just live without it just fine. Like HP is, is in about a dozen court suits right now for this kind of crap. Uh, in their particular case, it was uh, the multifunctions. If your cyan goes, you're not allowed to fax anymore because you know, you, you're, you're out of cyan ink, so obviously can't. And oh, if you put one of the counterfeit ones in, well, we're not going to let you fax either. So Canon has been doing this for a while too. And it's, it's obscene. Canon's what idea was, we're going to put an expiry date on our ink cartridges. So even if it's still full, it's just that a certain amount of time has passed and you should buy a new one. Apparently they can't source those anymore. So that's also not a thing. They're, they're, their cartridges suddenly don't expire anymore. It's it's magic. But rather than, you know, say, you know, maybe we should just back off on this whole idea. We should co not copy protect our cartridges. We should just stop charging, you know, three times the price of a new printer for the cartridges. Ah, we're just, we're going to treat this as a minor inconvenience. And don't worry, the second we can find these chips again, they will be the most important things in your life. Look at this. We had mentioned Isn't something that sexy? about big power earlier. Everything's going big right now. Oh, so, it's super big. And honeycomb big. You're going yeah, to need yeah, yeah. a power supply to power that new 3090 Ti Alder Lake KS build of yours. Yep. How about especially if you throw a 3090 Ti in there and uh, well, two of them figure out how to power it. Two 3090 Ti's yep. an Alder Lake nope. 12900 KS. Only one. Threadripper. Sorry, over one. gigabytes of... Well, yeah, Threadripper 2. Silverstone Hella Power. The Hella... It's a Hella Pop. 2050 W. And the W stands for watts. You're going to need one of those double rail style outlets, whether that for your country is 230 or 240. You need a hell of a lot of modular connectors on there. You, it will actually work. On uh, normal mains. Really? It'll only provide 1,650 watt at that point. Though. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, I mean, you, that's asking a lot from 15 mm. amps. <laughs> well, yeah. You like, need, a lot. Can you do this with 20 amps? Uh, if you're running non-standard voltage, probably. I wouldn't recommend it, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you... Because you, yeah, you'll probably end up tripping breakers at 20. I don't know for sure, but yeah, I, I would definitely go with 30. But so, yeah, I, why in the hell would you want over two kilowatts? Well, because there's this new card coming out, and this Silverstone Hella will be the first to ship with a 12 pin PCIe connector. One of them. And for those of you paying attention at home, that's not a 12 plus four. That's a 12. So the extra four pins, which are used for voltage regulation and uh, monitoring, this one doesn't have. So that uh, 3090 Ti is probably going to be voltage limited. Uh, apparently that's part of the spec is that if it can't figure out what voltages are running, uh, very similar to like the, the ATX connector on this has the same thing. It's got an extra four power to monitor how much power is going back and forth and signal. So you probably won't be able to run your 3090 Ti at full volt wattage with this thing, even this thing, which is just obscene. On the other hand, if you want to run, uh, I think it's got 12 uh, normal PCIe connectors, so you can just run whatever. It also has uh, the EPS connectors on it are well over two feet, which thank you. For Christ's sakes, why is the APS connector still, you know, within a millimeter's length of the of what you need? So it's it's got a lot of stuff to it. It's got some great uh, efficiencies as long as you hit above about 400 watt. It, it sort of peaks around 400 watt, uh, 97 or so percent efficiency, and tapers down from there. But if you're running about under 200 watt, it's it's you know you're talking 30 or 40 percent efficiency. This thing, you know, it needs to be pushed. Uh, transient power, uh, something really freaking important on something with this power to it was really good. 
On the other hand, the Ripple, not so great. Like for overall, it was sort of a mediocre power supply. There's a, I think it's a Rosewell that's just about uh, 2K that was, you know, overall better, but it didn't quite do uh, the transient loads as well. Uh, it's, it's just an utter and complete beast. And we're also seeing the, the bleeding edge of what the current capacitors that we're using uh, in this sort of thing are. And oh, really, we're going to, I, I think so. Yeah. Huh. They're, they're going to have to start moving towards uh, a little more of the solid state and some of these big stuff. Hmm. Cause I mean, yeah, otherwise how big are they going to get in there? Well, caps can get a lot bigger. I think it yeah, was just a one <laughs> little fan cooling this whole thing. Like just, it's, and then it's got passive cooling up until about four or 500 watt power. Once, and once it gets going, apparently you can hear it, but, uh, well, you won't be able to hear it over what you're running because I mean, if you've bought this thing, you're obviously running an insane amount of stuff. All right. A couple gaming quick hits on the list. Don't, don't worry about half life HDR or half life 2.5. Oh, come on. Remember lost coast. That was its whole yes. purpose was to show off HDR. <laughs> which we wouldn't even consider HDR anymore to be uh, quite frank. Look at this half-life ray traced. Yeah. Nice shadows. This is the, the same person that did uh serious Sam first encounter ray trace. And he found a couple of uh, projects on GitHub that were trying to do ray tracing for half-life that had sputtered out or weren't really doing that great overall. And sort of grabbed him and said, well, something, something, shoulders of giants, and ran with it, and is expecting to put it out later this year. It's the original version, not the source engine version, uh, although who knows when that'll happen as well. So it, it looks kind of nifty. And, I mean, who doesn't need a reason to play Half-Life again? <laughs> so, yeah, you just run, like, a quick little... Uh, the beginning of it shows the old version so that you can remember what it looked like. Oh yeah. If you don't. But, and unlike uh, quake two, they didn't add a whole crap load of assets. They just added ray tracing because the train didn't used to look like that. And it's amazing. The difference that just the ray trace shadows can make in yeah. the appearance of an old game. Yeah. Yeah, and they haven't overdone it. It, it just it adds to it. That was a good, you, that was a good example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there too. You, you do still suffer a little bit from the the outdated uh, pixel count and that, but still, it just it looks yeah, kind of spiffy. They're all flat, but you know. Yeah. Coming to Windows this year, like I had to specify, Windows, mm. the little operating <clears> system that could. Okay, how is NVIDIA going to help? Oh, I see. Yes, I saw something about this. They are bringing out Android 11 to all Shield TV models, according to Engadget. I wonder how that will affect Do people performance. people still use that? What, the Shield TV? Actually, I have two of the original Shield TVs. Um, one of them was purchased right after they came out in May of 2015. And uh, that unit actually got the notice for update today um, oh. before the show. And um, the other one has the update now uh, notice on it, but I've not updated it yet. But the update went um, pretty smoothly. Uh, I couldn't see any major differences uh, in the interface after the update. They mainly updated security, updated it to 11, of course, and um, added support for a couple of different apps, and that's about it. But the fact that they're still providing updates for a an almost seven-year-old Android device is uh, crazy. Usually not Android strong suit is going back for the old stuff and, and uplifting them to a later version. That's not typical. Let's move on to picks of the week. 
and not everybody has one, and we don't even have a Josh, and I never really have one. But Josh is up first. <laughs> Josh is up first, but I will have Jeremy go first because he's first on the list. Okay, so th- this is a deal for live viewers only because it's about to expire, but I spotted it, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with an ASRock B55 or B550M Pro 4, but once all of the discounts are applied, it's 60 freaking dollars. It, it's a B550M that, that is a mere $60 right now. I, this is, you know, if you know anyone who's trying to build a system, honestly, this is, if, it, if, if unless they hate AMD for some reason, throw this at them. Buy it now. It's a Might Pro ATX. It's got just about everything you need, and it's stupid cheap for right now. And it's not on sale anywhere. This is Newegg Canada. Uh, Newegg in the States, Amazon in the States. No, you're paying more than twice this. So, yeah, if you're just sort of, I know someone that's going to need a motherboard in the next little bit. I would suggest buying it now. It's, it's, it's ridiculously cheap. Remember when it wouldn't have been ridiculously cheap? For a B series <laughs> chipset, <laughs> but hey, that's the world we live in now. It takes these odd one-off sales for components to be the same price they were like three years ago. Uh, yes, yes. Because a does. micro ATX board, for whatever reason, they don't generally sell high-end ones. I mean, Asus ROG used to have a high-end Gene board yeah. every year, but most of those they also are budget don't sell boards. for around hundred bucks. Yeah. This is crazy to think that just, there are micro ATX boards that are like three hundred dollars now. I know. Yeah. Like, I was looking at Newegg today, and I was just realizing that the uh, GTX sixteen fifty, which I bought <laughs> one of a year and a half ago, I think. Just for a two years and we didn't ago. know why it launched for a display. Out, we we're like, why, why would you launch this? I bought one that's a half height card specifically to use in the that Atari build that I'm still working on. Ah. Um, and it was about $150. And I was looking, and these GTX 1650s are selling for $360. And yep. I, it just blows my mind, the cost of, uh, of any of the components now. GT 1030s or whatever the number is yes. cost as much as 1650 did a couple of years ago. The only affordable yeah, graphics card you can GDR4. buy anywhere is oh. a GT 710, I think, which is like 70 bucks. I, I'm pretty sure that that card, because I have one, the drivers have not left behind. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Though that buy, you have like that buy one. Zotac card. I have the half height one. I, well, oh. it's mm-hmm. it's half height if you remove the the back the the mounting plate. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. it has like a VGA connector. That's that's yeah. Anything's half wires. height if you try hard enough, Brad. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's draw, it's brought over with a ribbon cable. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you keep talking oh, because it's right. your pick. Yeah, true. You know what? Are you guys bothered by stuff dust? crap tucked into your keyboard yeah i can't yes terrible what about in and cars like when you have the you know what gunk get in Vents, your like dashboard yes, and your center console it's and terrible stuff. like like you just can't like get it all out of there and this is a, a very slimy weird looking product that's gonna save you in this it's a dust cleaner that's sort of a moldable sticky thing that you press it over the keyboard or maybe your vents in the car yeah. and picks out all of the dust and other crap that's jammed down in there and cleans it out and fresh uh is this 100 percent natural product fresh um, lemon natural scent. sources if you look there's a, a promotion available it's like a, practically a two for six dollars clean up your damn keyboards people you ever like sit down in front of somebody else's computer and you can't, you're afraid to touch the keyboard because it just is so nasty. Please people go out and get this. It's $6. Clean up your life. Freshen up your keyboards, freshen up your cars. It's really sticky. It's very sticky. Please go do this. This is the cheapest I've ever seen silly putty being sold for. So (laughs) somebody says it's gack. Hell yeah. Gack. Yeah. Guy knows what I'm talking about. It's like, other people's keyboards are disgusting. 
Yeah, another reason. The first reason thing you I do like is you turn them upside down and you just smack them on the table oh. a couple of times. It's and oh. the stuff that it leaves on the table. Is it's so horrifying. Gross. It's absolutely horrifying. If any of it starts to move, that's when you just leave. <laughs> oh no, no! The worst is when you tip it over and you smack it, and nothing comes out, and you look back and it's still filthy. Oh man! That, yeah, I, yeah, I work with some people. All right. You know what? This is six dollars. Start giving yeah. it out as gifts. It does look like that that stuff that my 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 son has slime. had this a couple of different times. It's oh, it's really slime. sticky. It's yep. not the easiest thing to clean if you like smear it around on your toys and stuff too much. But that's called snot, Sebastian. Uh, oh, that stuff. Okay, yeah. oh, it's okay. the same color. Hey, What's organic? Somebody said just just buy a new one. Well, sometimes it's a laptop. So there's that. If you don't use a laptop that has a replaceable keyboard, then you know. Logitech K95, washable. Yeah, it's nice. You just throw it in the sink Good. every once in a while. The ch- you can do that with anything, keyboard. really. You just let it dry. Yeah, but it works. Just let it dry. Out. Oh, okay. Well, you can. Hey, <laughs> look, I have dry, scrubbed man. many a computer component in the sink with a toothbrush and hand soap, and it worked just yeah. fine after I, I dried it. I use it like a. Well, if you have one of the old uh, dishwashers. And you can yeah. put it on the, the very low heat. Best trick in way. Uh, you could clean just about anything with one of those. Dirk Bauer did a video a couple in. of years ago where he yeah. was uh, dishwashing motherboards that he had Vaselined up for oh, extreme yeah. overclocking. I saw as that long video. As, you take the, as long as you take the battery, the, the, the CMOS battery out, uh, and, and make don't sure you use get all the water out of it. Soap. Don't use a brace, you use of, a brace soap. of soap, everything's dead. Because, well, yeah. <laughs> but no, if you just run it through, it cleans beautifully. Don't use jet dry either. Uh, that's, no. that's. Look, all you need is Dawn and a toothbrush. And it will get yep. cat pee off of almost any motherboard and it will work afterwards. I've done this. If we can save a duck, we can save a motherboard. All right. I had no idea this was going to generate this much interest. So. You're welcome. <laughs> Can't please save us. Do you have a normal pick? <laughs> I have a normal Other pick. Uh, as, <laughs> as long as you are an Amazon Prime member, uh, this is a great deal. Uh, uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can go to Prime Gaming and just get a copy of uh, Jedi Fallen Order for free for the rest of this month. Um and that's a great game. Uh, it's one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played. It's probably the first Star Wars game that ever got lightsaber fighting correct. Um, and it's a fun game with a very good story. And uh, I highly recommend it. And it does not clean keyboards. Yeah, do not clean a keyboard with a lightsaber. It is We're going to have to put that avoid uh, both warranties. I have to put that tagline on a lot of things from now on. A disclaimer. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we disclaimer. need new shoot. We need new Does shirts. not claim keyboards. Yeah. Yeah, I made it a chunk of the way through that game, uh, and then Baldur's Gate killed my machine once again, and they put their saves in the most stupid-ass freaking spot. I think it's under, like, app data or something. So I thought I'd backed up all my save games. I had not. And I sort of started oh. playing it again. I haven't really gotten far because I, I went. I'm, I remember like the old uh, Jedi Knight ones where like there was multiplayer lightsaber fights and unblockable moves that you could do if you get your key combos right and stuff. And that was sort of this. This is more. Yeah, it wants me to grab my con my uh, controller and lock onto people and do stuff, which is just foreign to me. You're but yeah, I'll try it again. You're just being crazy. Well, yes. You're just salty because you lost your save because you didn't know to go to app data, local roaming, you know, 17. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Because one thing I love about a new machine is wiping out app data altogether. I had actually uh, uninstalled that game uh, after I'd completed it and decided uh, about three or four months ago that I wanted to play it again, reinstalled it, and I was surprised that hey, uh, my my old saves weren't there, but luckily I just wanted to replay it, so I started fresh. All right. 
If there's nothing more, I think we're going to put uh, an end to this very low-key show. This has been the PC Perspective Podcast. Thanks for listening and or watching. We'll be back next week. Hopefully everybody's back and healthy. Uh, and we'll have a more spiritual yet. discussion about things. Not dead.